Welcome back, everybody, to Virtus Pro versus Hellraiser's game number two. The Virtus Pro one up in the series, looking to close it out for 2 0, but Hellraiser's will change things a little bit. They had problems with Lil Sand King, so in the second draft, they'll take a first pick Sand King for themselves. It's just a really strong opening hero. I don't really think you can say there's tons of stuff that you can do into a first pick Sand King that kind of sets you up for just like an easy win. Yeah. Hero is just all around, it fills a ton of different roles. Nyx has been also first phased quite a bit in the games over the last couple of days. He's more of the support that kind of, he just sits in the lane and he just is annoying to either the enemy mid or perhaps there's an off lane that you want to try to, to zone out a little bit and then later on he transitions into more of this information gathering hero where Sand King is just the one who roams around, gets his farm, eventually acquires his blink dagger and can offer a ton of split push and team fight presence. So they're both strong heroes in their own right. Uh, Hellraisers we talked about in game one, really important for them if they can take at least one match mm -hmm. off of VP just to prevent themselves from being that absolute bottom of the group. Warlock, second pick up here from Virtus Pro. I was expecting like maybe Nyx Rubik or something, but uh, Warlock. I I feel like Ro Rube, uh not Rubik. I feel like Warlock is being underpicked right now. I think that hero is really strong for for the pet. It's just a little bit of question of the laning phase, especially with all these two one two situations running around. Warlock um, may not be the greatest when it comes to actually being able to provide kills. I think he provides longevity in a lane. Yeah. So if you're up against a, like you mentioned, that two versus two, and, and one lane has good harassing tools or, or kill potential, he just kind of nullifies that. And then later on into the game, he's really good in team fights. And if you can get some kind of like Fatal Bonds rock into an upheaval, and you're not really interrupted in that combo, he offers probably some of the strongest team fight presence of a position four or five that you can actually pick. Besides, you know, maybe you look at your Sand Kings and stuff like that to be able to kind of accomplish the same thing. But VP opening up with what I would say is a pretty good combination of just really good laning phase. Not like you said necessarily kill potential, but they're, they're solid heroes. Mm -hmm. And they'll have a crap ton of team fight if they're not ruined by Global Silence. Sounds are picked up by uh, Hellraisers, so they've got this nice initiation combo. Epicenter Blink and the Global Silence to prevent any counterplay. I love that Batrider Ben. Traditionally, you wouldn't want to pick Batrider into Nyx, but the, the beauty of having a Batrider Silencer combo means that you can guarantee you get that lasso off because the Global comes as soon as the lasso is right. out, and then you just get that free kill. So VP obviously not wanting to to play into that, taking out the bat. What are some of the other big uh, initiating offlaners that you're I like Centaur Silencer, Silencer a lot. Okay. I think it's the, the potency of being able to immediately be where you want in the fight, like the positional advantage of having the Stampede, and then you global on top of your initiation, and that's how you take the fight. You know, you with, with that kind of mobility and preventing the enemy team from taking action, it's really easy, I think, to, to take that team fight victory. And last game we saw Hellraisers even having a solid draft. They just didn't really feel comfortable fighting. I like the fact that they banned the Enigma. Uh, I like that combination quite a bit because, you know, Enigma obviously wouldn't be a pickup normally against the Warlock, but same situation because of Silencer. Uh, what about your uh, your favorite offlaner, Legion Commander? Mm, I do love me some Legion. It's solid synergy with Silencer. Mm -hmm. Later on in the game, you can even press the attack him if it's a core. I mean, we don't know yet. Right. If it does end up being like a mid silencer or something like that, it is uh, definitely possible. I think Go ahead. a lot of the time, Legion is... I Like in this game, I don't really see a great target for duel. That's my one concern. And you also need something that is going to be able to, to follow it up. So if you don't have global, I feel like it's hard to duel heroes on that team. Especially now that you have a Sven, because Sven walks by whoever's getting dueled, hits Warcry, yeah. and it's like, uh, you're not really, you're not dealing damage. Sven definitely kills that idea, for sure. So, Hellraisers, with the safe laner on board, I'm presuming they're going to pick up their offlane. As you've got a very healthy idea of what you're going to be laning against. They do have the Sand King, so they can go ahead and do some sort of dual lane with the Sand King and really try and put pressure on the Sven. 
a melee core who's going to be supported by a, a warlock who doesn't have a stun. So you can actually get, again, he's just going to be there to try and deal with the harassment that you're going to be dealing, but won't be able to actively stop you from kind of owning the lane. There's a lot of choices. Like, if you were to do the 2 1 2, you could basically, like, I don't know if they would go back for the Lone Druid after how they played it in game one. I don't feel like. I really felt its presence, but it is one of those heroes that's really good in lane. And if all your goal is is to try to shut down the Sven, you can you can run something like that with the Sand King, and it would be fairly effective against the the next warlock for sure. Yeah. At the very least, you're forcing some kind of reaction, but it it depends on what idea how Razors have for okay, how did we lose last game? Like, what was our biggest issue? Because to me, I think it was actually just their confidence, like not not taking these engagements and not trying to do more. But the clockwork is something that. It wants to go in, so I like that. I like the idea of hook into global silence. Maybe you can isolate the warlock. I mean, I guess right now that would be ideal, yeah. given the heroes that Virtus Pro currently have. Yeah, that's kind of the problem that we were talking about Leech Commander, right? Is that warlock would be a good target, but he's so far in the back that it's just unlikely. Hook shot, however, that uh, you're just in there. Like that, that has the range to find him. And I think that Clockwork is good against both of their supports. Nyx yeah. doesn't really like... If you're carrying dust as clockwork, Nyx doesn't want to be anywhere near you. Like, it is... You're just guaranteed to die, pretty much, if you get caught out. Uh, Sven, later on into the game, he probably doesn't care too much about it. And Warlock is pretty much the same fate as a Nyx Assassin. You get hooked, you're pretty much a dead man. So, VP uh, still looking for their mid. Still looking for the potential offlane as well. So, we need uh, no one's hero. I'm wondering if they're going to last phase him again. Because last game they third picked his hero, right? I think they picked Void third. And yeah. then they they picked the Luna fourth. Yeah, okay. So this time around it's a little bit different. They're, they're taking Ramsey's hero first. Going to set up no one with a bit of a better laning phase. It's kind of awkward if you take your offlaner right now and try and save your mid just because you really don't have a good idea of what that safe lane is. Well, you don't... Silencer could still be rotated into the core and you don't know what that safe lane hero is yet. You don't really know either. Yeah. I think that's the, the real concern. But if I was to give someone a poor matchup, I'd want my offlaner to have a worse matchup than my mid player. Yeah, for sure. Alright, they're going to take... The puck. Maybe feeling like there is. Uh... I think it's nice to have another initiator when you have a warlock on your team. Yeah. Because I think that warlock is best used defensively more than anything else. So once the puck commits to the team fight, you're like baiting out this global silence or something, and then a few seconds later, if the fight hasn't already been lost, then you have the the warlock to fall back on. And if you look at Hellraiser's team. Clockwork, Troll, Sand King, they all kind of are in the fray, more or less. It's very easy to get a good Fatal Bonds into a Golem if you're not the one who has to initiate. I think that's one of the key points in having a team that is good with Warlock. And it's also a hero that offers a tremendous amount of AoE damage. So already you have Sven Cleave, you have Puck Spells with the Fatal Bonds combination. I think the heroes are on Hellraisers, if they get into this trap where they get coiled and then they feel like they have to commit, that's exactly what VP want with their heroes. With the early puck pickup, it does leave open uh, a potential mid uh, for Hellraisers that's melee. I was just trying to run through my head any of the heroes. Like, I don't think they have the great... I, they have okay synergy with uh, Faces Void, for example. Uh, the Dragonite just got banned out. You know, they've got... They would get Void Troll um, and Void Sand King. That's not terrible. Um... We already kind of said no to Legion Commander. That's sometimes a mid pickup. It is going to be that faceless void, void. Yeah. yeah. I still think it's a, a really strong hero because when you're playing against Sven, for example, and you pick the Troll Warlord, like that's traditionally what teams have been doing, at least during the, the group stages, is, oh, you have Sven, we're just going to pick Troll. Right. And it's had a lot of success. But in this game in particular, having the... Just the mass team fight that Virtus Pro always managed to accrue through some way or another. I think it's nice to have a secondary plan and just say like, okay, Chrono with a silencer as well. Yeah. And just like the multiple pronged initiation that we were talking about with VP, Hellraisers now also have. And they're going to go ahead and round things out with a, a no one invoker. So it's going to be the offlane puck 
maybe a little bit of a surprise for Hellraisers here, but I think that they have the heroes to deal with it, as it will in fact be a, a support silencer. Yeah, you really don't see Pasha play uh, Puck too often, so it's a nice switcheroo though for Virtus Pro. If the whole goal of the hero is to just start a fight, then Puck doesn't really need that many items. Yeah. The whole reason that Blink became popular is because, as a core role, you want a way to be able to get out of the fight. So normally what you would do is you would orb in and silence, and that's your initiation, except when you do that, you have no escape plan anymore. Mm -hmm. So the Blink Dagger allows you to orb and still hit targets, but also have it so that when your orb ends, it's not in the middle of five heroes. But if all he really cares about is just coiling, then it doesn't doesn't really necessitate having a Blink Dagger. Yeah. Seeing if I can find uh, Huck on the list of heroes, because I'm trying to think, like, I don't think I've ever seen Pasha play Puck. I'm sure he has scroll, a Puck. Scroll, scroll, I mean, scroll. it's one of those heroes where you don't see it in the offlane capacity that much. Typically, when you do see it, it's like with a draw lineup. 36 times. But the last time he played it was in 2016. Okay, so it's been a while. Yeah, it's, it's been a little while. Uh, he could have even been running it like mid or something at that time because Pasha's bounced around. And... Still think in this game, it's. I don't think it's an outdraft by VP. Yeah. I feel like Hellraisers in game one had a solid draft. I feel the same way in game two. It'll just be down to can they execute the heroes? Or the I guess more so, can they coordinate their fights? Correctly. I, I should point out that that was his pub profile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't even his, his competitive. Well, he probably doesn't play very much mid, and I don't think... You know, you can play offlane puck in pub games. It's not awful, but depending on what supports you're playing against, it can feel real bad. Yeah. Oh, he played it yesterday, apparently. But uh, only 11 times competitively. Looks like we are potentially having some kind of... Technical issue on the side of VP. They've they've asked an admin for some assistance. So how how are you feeling about this switch route though? The the puck off lane and the um, the invoker mid against the void. I always like having. Okay, so the way I see void mid, you don't ever really kill the enemy mid unless you either get a lucky rim or you are like level six and you have a support rotate to the lane. Right. So if the hero can't offer kill pressure, then invoker is great. Because Invoker can just sit there and farm under his tower. That's usually what happens to Exord Invoker's mid. Is yep. that you get lane pressured because you have no wave clear. And you're just CSing under your tower the whole time. So unless, like, Hellraisers can manage to formulate some kind of gank with the Sand King with a void mid. It's pretty hard to kill no one, I feel, in, in this particular matchup. So if you're just free farming the whole game. And you can alacrity your Sven during team fights. And, you know, eventually Ramses gets to that blank BKB stage. I think Invoker is a, a phenomenal pick. And now you're also having to look at this team fight for Hellraisers and say, okay, we need to potentially chrono two different people. We need to chrono Ramses and no one because they're going to be the, the two highest uh, impact. And then you also still have to worry about Rock and Coil. So I think that this is actually not that easy of a void game because yep. there's so many, like, criteria that you need to hit when your chrono goes out. It's not like last game where VP are just able to solo chrono one person because Hellraisers were playing the game super scared and never really were able to pressure. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I kind of see it as like you you win the void matchup, the mid matchup, by outgreeting him. Yeah, you know, exactly. There's, there's very few like aggressive mids that really can actively push the void out of lane just because his poor man shield efficiency with the uh, high base armor is so strong. I would also say that the best way to harass a Void or to win the lane against a Void is not to burst him, but to whittle him down over time. Yeah. And having Alacrity and just throwing out like two or three right clicks is way more effective harass against a Void than just nuking him because he'll just, you know, undo all the damage with Time Walk. So having that kind of consistency of damage output on an Exord Invoker is going to be great. Have fun, says Lil. I'm not sure how much fun Hellraiser is going to be having against this lineup. It just looks like... Uh... Like, you, you said it in the draft, like, Virtus Pro always seemed to be able to get just, like, better kind of team fight setup. And I'm looking at both Game 1 and Game 2, and Hellraisers just have this awkward lineup. You know, it's not a... It, there's some synergy between their heroes and stuff, but there isn't, like, that very clear... We have multiple sources of initiation and strong nuke damage and this good AoE. Like, 
They don't really have that. While Virtus Pro, they've got multiple avenues of initiation. They've got very strong AoE team fight potential. Pasha is not going to be able to jump to his orb. What a timing there for Milan and that Burrow Strike beautifully set up. Well, that helps. That is going to be a first blood for J4. So free intelligence. Yeah. Plus two. I do kind of agree that Hellraisers are maybe the greedier team because they want the Void and the, the Troll to both get a pretty good amount of items. And Silencer is not what I would call like the super high impact support. Yeah, he's, he, he's not creating space for your, your farmers, that's for sure. He's just really annoying in lane. Yeah. Like he, He's able to win the lane for his team. And if, if that lane win transitions you into a really strong point in the game, then I think the, the pick is definitely worth it. But looks like we're going to be starting off with the, the two heroes mid. They will send Kaiser to the mid lane of the Troll Warlord over the Void. And this is going to be a little bit frustrating, I think, for Lil trying to harass a poor man shield troll. And not the easiest thing, especially since he got second hit bashed on the level one Berserker's Rage. Yeah, this is a actually a very hard matchup for Invoker if it's just a strict 1v1. Pasha being pushed away. Uh, meanwhile, bottom lane, 33 versus Ramsey. And I feel like a lot of this game rests on 33 shoulders because the laning phase might go okay for Hellraisers, but it's going to be that 15 to 25 minute marker where a lot of team fight kind of wins games, uh, wins that period of the game especially, that Hellraisers are going to be their weakest because Troll's going to want to farm at that point in time. You're only going to have Chronosphere every two minutes or so. You've got Silencer's Global Silence that's always gonna, only going to be used in a, in a blue moon and it doesn't really provide a whole lot of team fight outside of that. So a lot of it's just going to be like, can Milan get a faster Blink Dagger than he did last game? And can 33 snowball as the clockwork? Can he have a really good laning phase and transition that into quick pickoffs so that he's big enough to actually be a threat in team fights rather than just a, a, you know, I go and initiate and die immediately kind of hero? I think that given his lane, he should be able to at least get a quick six. And if he gets quick six into dust, there are some really easy kills on DP, like the Warlock, the Nyx, even, you know, no one on the Invoker. If you get that kind of hook into Cog and you have the troll mid, you can definitely have a big impact. I think it put it does put a little bit of pressure on him, obviously, as he's gonna eat a stun here in the bottom lane. Chase him down, get as much damage as they can. They've also got middle as uh, well. Middle bonds. Dive in, no one getting low, pops a fairy fire and gets into the tree, so he'll be okay. Kaiser takes a large amount of damage from the tower in return, so that ends up being uh, a little bit unfortunate for Hellraisers. Kind of have to eat through an equal amount of regen despite it being a 1v versus 2. Lil grabbed himself a, a haste rune and booked it up to the top lane. I think it's. Oh, okay, this is dangerous. Diving in even deeper, though. They are going to be hit by Lil with a stun. He managed to get the spike hair face out as well. Milan caused enough of disruption. Stop going on the Kaiser and won't be able to punish Hellraisers for diving in so deep. For the time being, I think no one is still happy with the, the overall situation. He's got Lil hanging around once again, still leading the CS 17 to 6 compared to the, the 12 and now 13 and 0 of Kaiser. Over time, the Invoker will start to do better in the lane, especially once you hit level 5. That's when you're going to feel real good. You get the third point into Exort, damage is high. Top lane, Pasha. Getting no bashes, down here. Man. No bashes. Yeah, kind of unlucky. He's going to have to maybe stick here. No, he's good. So, Pasha, both the offlaners ended up having to head back to base. Since 33 went for the poor man shield build, he only had one healing sound to work off of, really. But, uh, our Puck. That really sucks. Heading heading back to base as an offlaner without being able to pick up boots from a side shop. Well, that's kind of why, why I was saying you don't really see a lot of Puck offlane unless you have, like, the Drow. Yeah. Because you, you need a little bit of a lane boost because it's, it's not a 1v1 where you can just phase shift all incoming damage. A lot of the time, the support is happy to trade with you because you're an offlane hero and you don't really want to take consistent auto attacks over and over again as a puck. You just want to like trade one or two and then back off and then go back in and do it again. Silencer also has the damage over time. As J4's rune's going to get taken from him. Punch in the face by a bug. Lil is uh, such a master at being able to control these these runes with the four position heroes that he plays. Dude, he's even like fixing the lane for his, his off lane. Yeah. Oh, never mind. He's just dragging it past. The rotation. Ooh, this is an interesting one. 
Milan went to bottom lane, hooked up with 33, and they go for a smoke. They're going to double wrap around here. They're going to be able to get the two-man stun with a follow-up from 33. They go straight for no one, ignoring Solo. Get a big-time kill. 33 is still going to be able to catch up to Solo, though, with the uh, little bit of poison that was on him. Slowed Solo down enough that they're going to be able to chase down the extra hero. What a surprising rotation. As Virtus Pro did not see that coming whatsoever. Some great effect in this of I'm actually really happy to see a rotation like that, like the Clockwork just bailing out of the lane, going with the Sand King towards mid, recognizing the the strength of Clockwork in this game against heroes that have no escape mechanisms whatsoever. So once you get kind of in range of that battery assault, you're basically dead to rights. You, you don't have a, a save on the side of EP until much later. And top as oh. well, they're going to lose the puck again. Pasha gets Tower Dove and Hellraiser's just firing on all cylinders right now in the second game. Meanwhile, 33, he's been doing a lot of creep cutting and pulling, but this time around, he's going to be punished for it. Won't be able to get back to the shrine in time this round. One to four. First kill just picked up by Virtus Pro. Hellraisers uh, have themselves in a small little gold lead, but experience is actually in the favor of Virtus Pro right now. The biggest thing is that the Invoker is getting a lot of CS in the mid lane. He may have died once, but that's okay. If you can die a handful of times in Invoker mid because you know that you're going to be playing a fairly greedy hero as a, a position two anyway, so you're going to be like farming the woods, side lane pushing. That's kind of what XR and Invokers do outside of you know, just sitting mid and, and continually hitting creeps. Eventually, you, you play like a Dragon Knight. You just go to a tower and you hit it if the enemy mid leaves his lane. And if you're getting pressured, you just fall back into the woods using Forge Spirit to, to see us. Lon runs over the haste rune and stands right there. He's going to be stunned up by the Storm Hammer, but they are just looking to be able to steal some of this uh, creep camp. But the, it's really tough stealing camps away from a Warlock. If you get too close, you're going to get Fatal Bonded and take a lot of damage. It's so value, though. He got all of those things. Yeah. Like, uh, 33 got both the big creeps. It's a lot of gold. Masha is level 5. He's had to die twice to be able to get this amount of farm, but uh, okay for him. Spike Carapace, Milan waits, does manage to get the mute, passes Spike Carapace this time around, and oh, Kaiser! He's gonna go for the dive, he stops. Warlock TPing was enough of a threat that Kaiser didn't want to go for, it, especially since he knows no one is not too far away at all times. He's been playing a lot of jungle now. So I want to just point out like the TP positioning of Solo there and how good it was. If you think about if Kaiser commits with no phase boots and he goes into that tree line, his TP would have blocked him in. Yeah. So he just could not commit. There was no way. Just really small stuff. Very interesting and uh, good plays coming in here from VP. Just ensuring that more heroes aren't going to be falling during this early game stage. It's one hell of a stack from Hellraisers too, but they don't really have a great way to clear through it. Silencer's Q is okay damage over time, but Pasha looking to get his greedy hands on some of that CS, but only hitting skeletons with that orb. And his silence is not a high enough level to go in there and really pick up anything either, so he's just going to have to soak half the experience, but not of the gold. Uh, the shot. He is okay. Eh, it's going to be solo. Got him. Got him indeed. I mean, you're you're a fairly avid clockwork player. I would say that this is a pretty solid clock game. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I I, I feel great about it because even the uh, even the Sven, he may not be a target that you as clockwork will be able to kill very often, but he is a great hero, which is very disruptive too. They're gonna be able to lock Lil inside the cogs, stopping the impale for quite a while. He just managed to get it off onto the void, but they're still gonna try and chase down Ramsey. Turns. Gets off the storm hammer. He knows he's probably dead if they just get off the chronosphere and right click him a bunch. So he turns and fights as best he can. An uh, excellent chronosphere placing though is going to manage to finish him up. But they're all so damn low. And they're going to be able to get the coil on a swift ending. Uh, Milan and Vac is also taking a lot of damage from the fatal bonds as well. He might just die if 33 man fights this one a little bit too much. Managed to get both inside the cog. So he's going to go for solo first. Does manage to get that kill on him, but the orb away does manage to let him get out. Milan does escape. Just a bit of HP. Looks like he had Tranquil Boots going, so. And Hellraisers are just doing it in the early game this time around. They played the last game. They felt real scared, tentative about taking fights. And this time around, it's just, nope, we're walking in. We are we are just playing our Dota, full out aggression, winning the laning phase for the time being. Troll is pretty even on CS right now with, uh, with no one, only a handful behind. They keep up this kind of pace. This is what you want. 
You don't want to let VP get to their, you know, chaotic offering, their puck blink timing, the Knicks having Vendetta without taking some kind of advantage during that point. Yeah. Top two net worth, the Void and the Troll. That's what you want to see if you're Hellraisers. But Virtus Pro, their two cores are not too far behind, and they're always going to farm a bit more efficiently, or at least should anyway. We saw that game earlier uh, yesterday, the Troll versus Sven, and Troll actually stayed ahead of the Sven in farm at pretty much all times of the game. But normally, that Sven should be able to outfarm the, uh, that was, the Troll uh, once we get to that point. That was a burning Troll Warlord. <laughs> yeah, that was something else. Definitely a treat to watch. This time, uh, they actually committed an epi, by the way, top lane to Lil. Wasn't able to finish him off, but they do, yeah, they do end up popping it. I think that, yeah, Swift Lightning didn't have Chrono, so he didn't offer really enough damage to, to be able to secure that one. Uh, still 33 walking around in the enemy jungle. He's potentially going to find Solo here, but they do have a bit, uh, ward down, so they spot him out. Uh, our puck is sitting at 1,200 gold. I was trying to match the offlaners here and see, because 33 is obviously going to come online a lot faster and have that early game impact. But once the puck gets the blink dagger, he can kind of match the uh, clockwork when it comes to that initiation and damage. But uh, he's bottom right now. I don't know what exactly he was up to. As uh, Ramsey's definitely been the one planted here and doing all the farming, so I'm not sure what his plan was. Looks like they're gonna head towards mid. They do need to get the stun off here with uh, the Sunstrike landing. Kaiser actually takes a lot of the creep wave, and he will manage to get away thanks to the little silence from Hellraisers. I like that 33 like TP TP faked and then just canceled it because he knew that there was a pretty low chance he was gonna be able to get a kill from that. Saw creeps by his tower, just wanted to play it more efficiently. In the meantime, HR, they get the tier 1 up here pretty easily. Don't think that VP want to try to go into this. They're still waiting on Solo to get level 6. And I don't know who, which one of them bought the tome, but I guess it was probably Lil since he's almost level 7. I think that's fair enough because Nyx is Assassin. He really needs the levels, not just for the, the Vendetta, but just overall. Nyx Assassin is, I think, one of the most level-dependent support slash offlaners out there, because the, your third skill, which for most supports is not that big of a deal, but for this one, huge deal. Getting that higher level of mana burn can do a lot for you. Yeah, uh, for sure. Alacrity Sven with God Strength here, just annihilating the stack. It's already dead. It's like five hits. Good stuff. And meanwhile, they do smoke up on Hellracers and a troll picks up a double damage. They're gonna take an early Roche. This is pretty much exactly what Burning did yesterday on IG. Yeah. He just randomly walked into the pit. I think he was actually the same level, but he had a completed Mask of Madness instead of just the, uh, the point of the game. So easy rush for Hellraisers. Nice little advantage there. Lil going to do a bit of scouting. There is a sentry down, but it is nighttime, so... Man. Oh no, they have a ward too. They, they actually just saw him. I am feeling so good about Hellraisers, because I just looked over about Milan. Couldn't get a Blink Dagger last game. We'll have one. Oh, as long yeah. as he doesn't die here. Yeah, he didn't get hit by the Vendetta. So, he's going to have one. About 14 minutes here. That's excellent for support. Now they just got the Chronosphere Initiation on to no one. He's very dead. Ramses doesn't even stop farming the Ancients, because he's just useless. Hellraisers really pushing the pedal to the metal here. They have taken... Two towers already, as well as a Roshan. That's a lot of objectives to take in the first 13 minutes of the game. Yeah, they're not done yet either. They're just walking straight bottom. Even with the Chrono committed, it's a really high priority kill. They take out no one. They're making their way towards that tier one of the safe lane of VP. The Golem is available and so is Coil, but I'm really unsure as to if VP want to commit before Pasha has that Blink Dagger since he's so close. He's only about 150 away. Once they have that, I think is going to be the big turning point for VP. That'll be their, their timing is, okay, can we get a team fight going in our way? Hellraisers. Oh, Full perfect scan. On scan. Lil's gonna run in there and scout some of these heroes. A lot of them misses the hook shot though, and they are gonna be able to get an excellent stun, but the global sounds goes down, and now Ramses is left alone against so many heroes. They finally get off the impale, as well as the Warlock Chaotic Offering. He managed to finish up two heroes. J4 is hoping to be able to get the last bit of damage. 33 now runs into suicide against Ramsey, but he realized he's just not gonna be able to do it with battery stalled against that many units, and now he tries to escape, but it's not gonna happen. The stun goes down, 
And Draskal, you couldn't be more right. They get the Blink Dagger on the puck, and they get one hell of a team by killing four members of Hellraisers, and Hellraisers get nothing for it. It was a greedy maneuver, to be honest, because they didn't bring Kaiser. Like, Kaiser has the, the Aegis on him right now. He's got the Yasha, the, the Morbid Mask. If he was there, they would have killed the Sven before the Rock came out. Right. And if that happens, there's no follow-up damage, Swift Ending lives. They probably take that fight in a, in a lot better of a fashion, but they tried to get too much. You know, they were greedy about it. They didn't bring everyone. They wanted to get the tier one and take a team fight. Yeah. And because of that, they get punished hard. Hellraisers may have to cool things down a little bit now. Uh, Kaiser is not going to be finishing up the SNY, apparently. He's got the BKB queued up. Let's see if he actually does commit to that build. Maybe it's a large amount of magic damage, especially with the puck having the full level of nukes right now. Lil sitting behind Swift Ending right now, but Milan is equally sitting behind Pasha. So full support setting up on a core, but it's going to be the initiation first. Oh, no, he actually managed to get the Burst Strike before the combination. Now the Chronosphere's there from Swift Ending, but here comes Ramses. Oh, no, the Chronosphere turned so bad, especially with the Fatal Bonds. Swift Ending, he does have the Time Walk up just barely in time. Lil's going to go for Long Range Impale, misses out by just a tad. That Chrono helped VP more than it helped Hellraisers. That's pretty unfortunate. It's it's hard though, right? Because when you do the Edge Chrono, you're you're like 10 units off or whatever, and you just it could have been an amazing Chrono if yeah. his two teammates were a little bit farther out, and instead it turns out to be a, a not so great one. So Kaiser now on the run, being spotted out here by VP. Oh, he's gonna get a haste. That's nice. That is a great pickup. Will does have Vendetta though. Highly unlikely that Kaiser's going to be able to find a kill off this man. Hellraiser's really trying to force this so hard, and again, they're going to get bit in the butt for their aggression, or maybe not. The turnaround stun onto Kaiser's. He's going to be ripped apart. That's just the Aegis. Meanwhile, the Epicenter onto the puck. They'll get that kill. That's very big, especially with 33. Looking to be able to catch more. He may not have the Hookshot, but he does have the Force Staff. So, he reveals some of the heroes off of that smoke. And Hookshot up. Oh, nice! nice. Force Staff forward bench. Hogs in Ramses. That'll set Milan up to be able to get the follow-up stun. They're going to stall up Ramsey's retreat back to base. Can Hellraisers actually take him down, though? They're diving all the way into the Tier 3. Or 33, he commits and does manage to get the kill. That's huge. 33 will die on the way back out, but that's okay. They killed the primary core of Verdes Pro, Ramsey Sven, who's been farming up all those Ancients and been getting so much net worth, and they force a buyback out of the puck. That was really good. I think... At the end of the day, if your clockwork can can get the kill on the spend like that, force a buyout, you're happy to die. Like, yeah, you just at the end you go, I've already won, dude. You can kill me now. I will win the war. Still, Hellraiser's making a nice little comeback after their their greedy team fight attempt inside of Virtus Pro's woods. They have the vision game on point this time as well. They can see inside of Virtus Pro's side of the map pretty deep here. Even have a lane ward in the safe lane too. Will in the meantime trying to find something, but as it stands right now. Hellraisers are kind of hitting all the points they need. The, the only concern, I guess, is that, you know, Swift Ending, he's fallen a tiny bit behind in the, the farming category. He finished up his Master Madness. He's kind of close to the Fusel right now. That'll be a big pickup for him, and then I guess we're looking for BKB after that. Why not the Shadow Blade that we've been seeing? I, I would think it would be effective for him to scout out a lot um, of these heroes. I think it's more in this particular game, because you know that the enemy team has, like, a Nyx as well that you feel like you might get spotted out before you're able to like Shadow Blade ineffectively and, and go for that. And plus, you kind of have to assume that they're going to have sentries if there's five men happening. Right. And I think that the biggest reason why you want Shadow Blade is for initiation in this game. I just feel like it might be too too easy to predict, given their heroes. Yeah, Virtus Pro are going to be staying pretty defensive and really grouped up. Uh, not really dangling themselves too far outside of the base. Not really pushing past River unless it's with, like, Puck. And, uh, maybe the scouting Nyx Assassin. Yeah, and the Diffusal Blade, I think, in a lot of cases, offers more kill potential. It's certainly more damage inside of a Chronosphere. Yeah. And outside of that, you know, you want to purge off the Warcry, the Sven. You want to be able to chase down elusive heroes like Puck and Invoker as well. If he pops Ghostwalk or something and you have Dust, you can just purge him too and he just can't get away. Yeah. So it's, it's great for Chase. Especially since that... Like, Two primary damage dealers only offer physical damage. Yeah. The Faceless Void and the Troll. That Warcry is such a big threat to them. 
Uh, they are going to smoke up on both sides, but Lil's going to be leading the charge here with his Vendetta. They do manage to get the dust onto him, but he spiked her face. Blood blinks forward, but he actually bro strikes back down them fountain. So they are going to be able to just get it. Lil inside the trees actually kind of hides himself. 33 goes ahead, bumps back Ramsey, stops any form of initiation from him, and Lil is definitely dead. Boyle stalls up some of these heroes. Swift ending is going to be able to get the Chrono Sphere, but he dies from the Meteor Blast, and his heroes just can't really follow that one up. Milan, though, does manage to kill the Pug. He's been making a lot of plays here in this game. Game number two, BKB trying to route Kaiser actually stops that storm hammer, but the physical damage of Ramses is too much, especially combined with the armor. So he can't actually turn and fight very well at all. At the end of the day, that was a two for one, but a lot blown by Hellraisers, the BKB as well as the Chronosphere. It was another buyback too, though. Lil bought back yeah. as soon as he died in the next. It was a really chaotic fight because VP had the high ground. And they broke smoke, really fast reaction from Milan, popping the, the dust to spot out Lil. And then there were like two different fights happening. Kaiser went in to try to kill the Nyx, and on top by the Ancients, the Clockwork just went straight in on the Sven and forced him to pop God Strength, but there's no follow-up damage. And the same thing happened to Swift ending. He throws out a Chrono, but it just stunned them because he instantly died to the combo coming out from no one. So the, the team fight utility of, of Hellraisers was all used, they just never had any damage. I think if, if, Swind end, if Swift Ending wasn't so aggressive there, that would have been a huge win for Hellraisers. He could have went back and chronoed the Sven. Yeah. Like, that, it would have been really hard, I think, for VP to deal with that. Especially since 33. I mean, he completely stopped the, the initiation or counter-initiation from the Sven, right? Because he had that Blink Dagger. So he just, like, he hook shots him in, cobs him backwards. That, like, the Sven's timing is, like, completely screwed. He's out of the fight for so long that Hellraisers were supposed to be in this huge advantage. But then... Swift ending dies and the Chronosphere is blown for nothing. Hellraisers are on the hunt. They know Lil's up here. They tried to throw a scan through the lane and he doesn't actually run through the last second of it. He actually moves forward. J4 may be his target because with him, the combination of the Sunstrike, they can actually blow him up. Lil gets that free kill. Rather, no one playing the bounty, but Kaiser might just be able to punish. Here goes the high ground, running into Pasha, though. Pasha gets his combination. That's another BKB used for Kaiser. So he's now down to eight seconds and a lengthy cooldown as well. Brutus Pro may feel comfortable forcing a fight. I mean, at the very least, they could take the tier one, right? Has like no health. Yeah. <laughs> just walk up here, hit it two times, get out. No big deal. There it is. Boom, boom. Nice tower there for VP. The top tower is fairly low as well. I'm not sure how much emphasis they want to put on just like immediately rotating up or if they want to try to farm a bit more because they do have the ward behind the tier one. I think Lil placed that when he was uh, walking to the other side of the map. Ward going to spot him out. Looks like 33 wanted to try to go for it, but he didn't have dust in his actual inventory. He had to swap it out, so it had the cooldown. And for now, Hellraisers, they're kind of losing the, the net worth advantage they had gained from taking a really successful early game. You know, they get the Roshan. And then after that, it's, it's been a little bit more quiet of a game. And I think that still kind of favors VP. Yeah, completely agreed. Especially with the way that Hellraisers took so much control early on in the game. I mean, they were looking at like a 5,000 gold lead, and that has now diminished only 2k. So the slow and steady comeback of Virtus Pro is making its way forward. But Virtus Pro do still need to be wary. Hellraiser's push. They're currently five man set up, looking and maybe pushing into that tier two. Now this is a really, it's still a really strong timing from Hellraiser's. Like their team fight is great as long as they can get the spells thrown out in the, the right order and they have the, the heroes there to follow it up. Warden, like if, smoke up. Hellraiser's not going to go for their tier two. They're going to cut through the off lane jungle. Don't find anybody there. They're going to keep heading north though. The ward saw them. So they know that there's at least three people top on DP. They're going to run into Lil here. Spot him out, throw it down the ward. They're actually going to stop the TP. Great play from Milan. It might actually get them the extra kill. Sure enough, they do manage to get the dust onto Lil. And Warlock is going to be chased down. Again, Milan, I have to say, like, he had a rough game for the Earthshaker. Had a hard time finding the, the Blink Dagger timing. But this game, he got the Blink Dagger super fast. And he's making so many great individual choices. Like, he runs into the Nyx Assassin like that, he could have just bro struck, but the Warlock would have gotten out. But he maximized Hellraiser's uh, kill gold out of that one.
Yeah, it was a really nice play for sure. They still have the utility of Chrono and Global as well. Tornado EMP, Swift ending is gonna bump out and catch no one with a troll ultimate and enough range for the troll to be able to hit on the invoker. They're gonna be able to get that kill. And Ramsey's once again, he's just farming nearby. Watch- Oh, oh what a force stab! 33 just bumped him down, and now Ramsey's stuck against five heroes. The coil comes out, but it's just not enough. They stand their ground and fight into Ramsey's. Now look to be able to catch more as Pasha, Yule Scepter. Time dilation, not going to land there, and Pasha will manage to make himself away. That is another buyback being used by Virtus Pro. They're not shying away from continually buying back to make sure that Hellraisers can't roll over them after they get that initial kill or two. Dude, that first step is sick. That like, that's the kind of plays that win you the game, oh, right? Yeah. Like you, you kill this Fen, you force a buyback. Sure, you didn't get Roshan, but that's a huge amount of economical damage dealt. Your trolls still continuing to farm. You have the epicenter up now. You have Hookshot of 33 wants to go back in for another fight. This is, this is the kind of Hellraisers I want to see. Absolutely. Lil scouting out Kaiser right now. While there are three heroes grouped up by Virtus Pro here, the Roshan pit. I think that's one of the beauties of the the Roshan attempt into a team fight and then just kind of backing up. Because the enemy team, once they're back up, they're just like, oh god, they're going to Roshan soon. They're going to Roshan soon. And Hellraisers, they're not actually thinking about Rosh, not yet anyway. They're just kind of calmly farming away. It's going to be uh, Virtus Pro trying to sneak in the Roshan here. Rosh oh, is at he half didn't, HP. He didn't flare the pit. I think they know what's going on, but he, they don't have vision to there right now. Okay, here that's kind of rough. Milan actually makes a jump in, misses the Bro Strike, gets silenced up, but he's going to make his clean escape away. Maybe not so clean. The Cold Snap's going to saw him up. The coil goes down, but Kaiser's in, and they actually manage to get 33 forward with the hook shot. Bumps back the Sven. That is beautiful setup as he locks no one inside the pit as well. They're going to be able to take out the Sven. Can they kill this Invoker as well with the Bro Strike? They surely can. A Deafening Blast won't save you from the inevitable fate. Pasha gets the shrine up and it looks like he will survive, but Hellraisers win a gigantic fight, taking three and will claim Roshan as their own. That is just huge. Again, 33's positioning in the fight was insane. He was stuck between like the Sven, pushing him back into the Void and the Troll Warlord. If you're playing into a troll with another hero that has a bash built in, and they pop the, the battle trance, you just can't move. I don't think he dies here. I actually killed the Cox. There's no uh, instant stun as Pasha. Let's go with the face shift. He is able to get away. This is now a huge advantage for Hellraisers. It's not a small one anymore, Cap. They've, they've upgraded. They most certainly have. 8k, 11 to 22. Sid about 7k experience lead as well. And even uh, even some of their supports are looking kind of farm. Look at J4, he's got drums and building into a four staff. So th this is the part of the game where you're happy to play silencer support, right? You are yeah. actually beginning to be a bit of a threat and some of your right-click damage, especially since you've got such great setup. You've got Chronosphere as well as Troll Ulti uh, to kind of make you the, the, the best right-clicking support you could possibly be. Uh, this is a... Uh... This is the ideal scenario. Your troll is ahead of the Sven by a, a really good margin at this point. You still have the, the control of the Chronosphere too, just in case things get a little bit out of hand. The the Golem is not really being as effective in fights as I think that VP wanted it to be, as like that form of counter initiation, because the cores on Hellraisers are just too tanky. They don't care. Like yeah. if you drop the Golem, it's it's if the Sven is dead, the damage is non existent. And they're also so fast, right? Like a lot of times this golem is coming in, but the burrow strike and the hook shot have already gone down. Uh, maybe it's even delayed by the global silence, so he's throwing it, you know, after heroes have been completely initiated on and taken a lot of damage. It's just coming all too late. Oh, the hook shot! 33 in Milan have been making this game for Hellraisers, and if they had caught the invoker there, that could have been, I don't know, depending on where the creeps were at the time, maybe even just a push uphill. That was so close. Would have been another huge pick. I guess that the last real test here for Hellraisers in this game is how effectively can they go high ground? Yeah. The, the late game invoker is something that I'm sure many people have played against before. I, I, I like to call it Tornado Alley. <laughs> when you just have the 9 second cooldown tornadoes with the Octarine and yeah. the, the level 25 talent. It is just obnoxious to play against. Nice Sunstrike kill there. Coming Little. in from no one will probably die for it, but honestly, trading is, is kind of worth it, especially since he's going to force something out here. They're going to go for the best. Doesn't. So 
he does get the clean kill and gets out. Pasha, meanwhile, is cutting creep waves here at the top lane. He's got the uh, one-two new combo that instantly kills creep waves. And he's going to find a courier. Oh, that is perfect. Pasha making the most of a very nasty situation that Virtus Pro is currently sitting in. Finding the small picks, small little advantages they can get for themselves. Do they have a gem finally? They do. I was about to say, Milan, I think it's high time the Hellraisers get a gem and start controlling this game. Control division and also has the added benefit of making it so Lil can't push out and scout heroes anymore. I really like Pasha cutting here. This is this is probably the best use of his time. Just preventing Hell Raises from getting to the base with like more than one creep wave. Yeah. It's very, very annoying to deal with this because the hero is just so naturally elusive that you don't you have to TP back like two heroes, I think, to be able to kill him, unless they want to TP back their void. And if they do that, then they no longer can push. So this is really good utilization of time here from Pasha. It's ensuring that his team doesn't have to worry about the the five men. Because right now I don't think VP are prepared to fight the five versus five of Hellraisers. Yeah, they've got uh, several items coming in that can add a very big window for Virtus Pro. They just got the BKB on Sven. That's one of the big upgrades. I think the other one is going to be the Aghanim Scepter from Pasha. He's actually very close to it. That is going to do wonders in helping lock down the troll even through his BKB, and uh, will have the added benefit of getting the extra stun duration onto heroes like Faces Void as well. Uh-oh, Pasha, he's away, he's good, 33, trying to get the reveal out. Doesn't manage to get the rocket flare, so he's gonna give up on the chase. But yeah, this, Pasha is doing an amazing job of creating space. They have four heroes on this side of the map now. That leaves so much room for Ramses, leaves room for no one to, to get themselves back into this in regards to farm. If you don't give Hellraisers the chance to go high ground with five heroes, or you're not like worrying about fighting in that Roshan pit, then this is absolutely the play. Apache is eventually going to be forced back. He says, okay, I've been here long enough. There have been three or four heroes chasing me around for the past like two minutes. I think that's enough space. And Hellraisers, I'm sure, are going to be breathing a little bit of sigh of relief as they're finally going to be able to... Uh push into a tier 2 with a, an actual creep wave. TP coming in. Oh, this is the one that's actually being set up by Lil. He sees 33 immediately, and they are going to be able to catch him just blow up the clockwork. They try to get greedy and push. Ooh, it looks like Pasha tried to catch some heroes here, but he's actually going to be caught by the Chronosphere. Phase Shift will defend for a while, but uh, as he comes out, stun will be long enough for them to get the kill. So... I think this is still okay for VP though, because they just commit a global and chrono. Yeah, for sure. So they can potentially even stop this push. Yeah, just the tornado EMP is enough to make Hellraisers fall back. They no longer want to try to commit to this all in. Ramses is going to be farming in the meantime. I thought he might keep going bottom just because he saw so many ultimates committed, but I guess Lil wasn't sticking around anymore to give him that that bonus vision. So all things considered, Virtus Pro lose their off lane, but it's it's no real big loss. Are, Ver are Helm Racers doing something wrong? Uh, their, their game has been stalled up quite a bit. They got that big advantage, but all of a sudden they're losing a lot of this game to Virtus Pro's very crafty, split pushing, cutting creep waves, and that sort of thing. And now they're actually kind of trading one for one pickoffs. Is there something that they can do better to actually get control of this game um, and, and get the five man into five man that they're really looking for? I think it's all around Roshan. I think it's not necessarily them doing anything wrong. I think it's just the nature of Virtus Pro's heroes. They have Invoker, they have Nyx, they have Puck. These are all very elusive in their own right. They're very good at being independent in a side lane and just causing the, the wave to push in. So a VP are just playing their lineup around knowing that the five man that they currently possess is not as strong as Hellraisers. So the way that they force the fight is by having like at least one lane pushed and going for Roche and saying, okay, you either go for this right now, Virtus Pro, and you fight us, or you're giving us chance to go high ground. And the high ground push is where they're gonna threaten the most because they have a troll warlord, right? This hero kills the face super fast. Yeah. So a lot of the time the split pushing heroes might be able to to buy you this window to where they can force the enemy team back by dealing damage like the tier threes. But Hellraisers have all their tier twos alive. So they're not gonna TP back if they're threatening a tier three tower with an Aegis and they have all their tier twos up and standing. So that's their window. That's when they, ha they have the opportunity, I think, to really force it and go for the win. Scotty built by Kaiser, looking towards an Assault Curas. Next Swift ending does have the BKB on himself, as well as the Blink Dagger. That'll really help 
and be able to catch the uh, the invoke with the back. Like, would you say that's that's uh, public enemy number one for yeah. a swift ending? I think the invoker is definitely the highest priority kill. He's amazing at defending your high ground. And again, he's level 21, so the longer the game goes, closer he gets to 25. It's going to get more and more hectic. Man, you, ha you know the frustration of pushing into a level 25 invoker. It is a... It is not a fun time. Killing your creep wave before it even gets close to the base from, like, double tornado is probably the most obnoxious thing I've ever seen in a level <laughs> 2 game. But they are going to be able to catch Lil. Gets the spike carapace, buys itself a little bit of time, uh, but they should be able to catch him. Lil's Scepter slowing down. And Lil. I mean, he knew this was going to happen at some point. He is actively playing on the enemy side of the map as much as he can because it's buying time. It's buying information more than anything for no one and Pasha to do this split pushing business. Yeah, and you can see they're abusing it to its fullest. They've already forced Milan to go top. No one was TPing back to base here. Pasha's going to get spotted by three heroes. Does manage to get the blink ahead of the Whirling Axe as he runs right into 33. Now he's going to throw down the cog, so when it comes down for the Yule Scepter, he will end up insta-stunned. A very worthwhile uh, global silence there, just ensuring that he dies. Yeah. Puck is probably of the heroes that can split push on the side of VP, the most elusive by a pretty good margin. And just getting him off the map allows the lanes to idly push in. And that applies a lot of pressure to VP when that hero is back up. Okay, swift ending. Out of position. Wow. What are you doing, swift ending? They just found a really good pickoff on one of the, the really tough split pushers. That's, yeah, that's unfortunate. And now he's dead for 60 seconds with Roshan potentially up. Now, fortunately, we know that Roshan Dude, is not actually up for another minute. He's but. got a DD as well. That could have been the dream for Virtus Pro. <laughs> <laughs> really could have, but alas. You will have to continue farming. What, uh, what do you like about Daedalus over uh, Bloodthorn mm. here for this Fen? I think it's just about the the chance of getting like the one shot because you have the Echo Saber, right? So the the Daedalus gives you the bigger crits. It's just about the consistency of the Bloodthorn in the region. I think that why people gravitate towards it so much, right. and the eventuality of fighting into like butterflies and that kind of stuff. But if you look at Troll's inventory, he's not going for the butterfly. He's he's going the route of the AC, and Void is pretty much in the same boat, so I'm not looking for that evasion. So that BKB versus BKB timing is watched so long time. Yeah. Where the Troll and Sven match up against each other with their BKBs, and their man fight. I think the, the, the data list is a little bit better, right? Yeah, the idea of that, and plus, yeah, Bloodthorn doesn't go through BKB, so you need, you need the, I'm gonna go in and get my, like, one shot in, yeah. and hope that it's enough to kind of turn that fight. Well, it is now Roche time. Spawns right in sync with Swift Ending. Much to his adoration. Yay! Give me some Roshan, give me the cheese for the troll. Or rather, the ages, ages, ages for the troll. The cheese for. You gonna pick it up? He's just kind of looking at it right now. I don't like uh, multiple cheeses on one person. Yeah, let's spread the love. Okay. You know, I, I'm not advocating, advocating for socialism, but uh, I'm just saying you should probably spread the net worth around a little bit. I'm okay with it. I think Milan's been playing a good enough game to warrant giving him a cheese. Oh, hell yeah. I would actually... Maybe it's better to give it to the clock, honestly, but he wasn't there, so... He could probably trade it to him later. Because clock is that hero who's going to be in there, you know? Like, Sand King has a bit easier of a time, I think, navigating the team fights and not dying than a clockwork. Whereas you like hook in and you go, oh god, please just don't kill me in one second. Pasha. They just chrono him, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just chrono No. Yeah. 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 Don't don't risk it. Don't yeah, see if you can him. get lucky. Yeah. Some nonsense. Just kill him. I like that. It's it's just the same same kind of note that we saw in game one, where the the VP Void, played by no one, had a huge advantage. He was just chronoing supports. He didn't even care. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to solo chrono. It doesn't matter. You're down a hero now. Can't fight us. Now, without the chronosphere, I'm not really sure. Can 33 release? Oh, he almost had that hook shot. The four staff, just enough distance for no one. Does manage to get away. I was, I was going to say, like, without the chronosphere, I'm not really sure if 33 setting up for an, an actual kill that can happen. With Milan and him. Maybe they would be able to kill the Invoker. I just find it a little bit difficult for them. Especially yeah, with BKB. Yeah, he has BKB. I don't think they actually kill him. 
I think whenever they use the Chronosphere, it's just like time to stick together, not look for those picks. Yes. Well, I mean, they're forcing DP back to their own side of the map. That that in itself is a win. Yeah, that's true. When you don't have the puck somewhere and no one had a DP back to base on top of it, that's that's ideal because now when everyone respawns, you're still going to have the waves pushed out in your favor. Getting to see the true power. Fully operational Daedalus had a 1600 crit with his god strength on the creep wave. Obviously, it won't be that much on these much higher armor heroes. But Depends on who he hits. That's true. If he manages to find like J4 or something and he's cleaving onto other heroes, it's going to hurt real bad. Actually, you know, 33 is not a bad hit either. He's only sitting on 12 armor. Yep. But they don't have god strength right now. So, Tornado Alley, I guess. Go. The BKB activated. They are going to be able to get out. Is that not? Uh... Oh, wait, time walk. Out. Yeah, time walk is real good against Coil. Yeah. 33 doesn't have to worry about missing hook shots anymore. We'll have plenty of them. 12 seconds hook shot is up. Magic resistance for Kaiser kind of makes sense for this game, just because the Invoker is such a, a big threat. Yeah, I would agree. Most of the time, you take the Whirling Axe cooldown, but you kind of figure the fight is going to be make or break during BKB durations at this point. Yeah. Whoever you can kill during that Magic Immune is going to be hopefully the best target. It's either going to be the Invoker or the Sven. That's kind of, I think, who you want to kill the most. All right, Draskal. In put yourself in the mind of Vertex Pro. In your best Russian accent. Oh God, I, I don't, <laughs> dude, I don't have a Russian accent. It just doesn't exist. <laughs> in your best Russian accent, just tell me how Virtus Pro defends. Like, what, what is, in their idea is the ideal way to take this fight? They have to bait BKBs. Like that's that's how you have to do it. You need to like invoker combo somebody, hope that they BKB it, and then just disengage and wait. Because eventually, when you get your Nyx to the late game, the Invoker to the Ultra late game, you're going to have really good opportunities. Whoa, there's the initiation from 33. Tries to bump Lil back. Only hits him to the right-hand side. Nice two-man Burrow Strike, though. They see the opening. That's going to be the Chronosphere as well. They go straight for no with the Chaotic the Cleave. Goes it slightly, but Sneeze is Christ Swift ending. He almost died clearly to the Cleave, but Grancy's still going to be able to man fight it up. He's dropping lower and lower. The troll is just a little bit too big for him to handle, so he gets to back himself away. And that is going to be life number one of Kaiser. Swift ending and him do not have the BKB, so they're actually going to be in some serious trouble. I don't think Kaiser gets out of this ice wall. Oh my god. Ramses is just going to chunk him down. The dude man is going to force that forward, but now that's just going to get more heroes caught. A three man tornado with the Sven already down. Swift ending is going to get chunked away, and J4 dies as well. 33, the lone survivor of the massacre inside the Radiant base, and immediately Virtus Pro, they go for the split push. Now, no one does not have buyback. Used it obviously in that fight after the Chronosphere, but he's still feeling confident enough. He wants to be able to immediately push in and see if he can force a buyback out of the enemy team. But 33 does manage to catch him before staff forward. No one still has the BKB to operate off of as well. A dust does manage to spot him, but he gets the BKB for the Burrow Strike Milan. That is gonna be wasted at the center, but another hook shot. They're actually staying on to this one. The BKB is gonna wear thin through Milan. He backs away. The blink is almost back up with the Burrow Strike, but now maybe 33 just dies. A Burrow Strike into a blink away from Milan as he leads 33 to his demise. And he does not have buyback either. Hellraisers, they may have just gotten ahead of themselves in their rush to try and bring down no one a second time. They may have just lost two heroes. Milan's going to be able to get hit into the shrine. No one's completely out of mana. Pasha's going to pursue. Another shrine activate. Yeah, Milan's going to go for it. Forcing defensive resources out of Hellraisers. They have the buyback on the troll, but that's all they really have. Rams is going to be able to get another god strength. There's no buybacks on Hellraisers. From the really critical heroes like that Faceless Void, plus no Chronosphere means Virtus Pro just went from defending to all of a sudden taking two lanes of wraps. No buybacks is really what hurts them the most. Like they had to commit everything just to, to force the buyback out of no one. Yeah, they're going to have their Void Chrono now, but they need Troll. They're going to be able wow. to get away from this. No punishment whatsoever coming out from Hellraisers. That, that whole situation is just what happens when you get too impatient. And you think, okay, I need to go for this right now. I need to I need to get this chrono. We need to get the kill on the invoker, which they did. And maybe they thought that the buyback was still on cooldown from earlier, but that was ages ago. Like they, there's a really good chance that the invoker and the Sven both are going to have buyback for those pushes. And as soon as you see that, you need to have a way of disengaging. And it seems like Hellraisers, you know, they popped their BKBs early. We talked about baiting it out. 
so that once the BKBs are down, your Invoker is just in full effect. And no one in combination with the, the Nyx Assassin and just burning all their mana, they weren't able to run away. Then when they're on the defense, they, they run in one by one. They try to catch out these heroes. We saw Milan in 33 commit for the, the Invoker super hard, end up getting punished. You have to sit in your base. You have to wait. Because if you don't have everyone ready to, to defend against Virtus Pro's push, this is a result. You lose a lane and a half of Rex. Now, Hellracers still have a buyback advantage. Just because the Sand King doesn't have buyback, that's not a big deal. If they can farm up the gold, Void and Troll both having buyback is a big advantage in the next team fight against the Invoker. If they can actually kill him, as well as the Nyx Assassin. Both saving out a cooldown of four and a half minutes right now. But I'm struggling to see if Hellraisers can actually force a fight in the next, let's say, four minutes and also win it. It's going to be a struggle for sure. We saw how difficult it was for them when they had the lead just to be able to get the lanes pushed out in a way that was favorable to them when they were pushing. It took a long time. It took probably like five to ten minutes of just, you know, maneuvering around the map, killing Pasha one or two times, and kind of forcing that. Now you got to do that again, this time being down instead of Rax. And constantly having like four spirits put your lane, Pasha's going to be, you know, doing kind of a, of a similar thing, just delaying the wave that's being pushed in bottom. Yes. I like what Solo's doing top lane. He's like so aggressively putting himself out there to push the wave. Because he has buyback. He's yeah, just why not? a chaotic offering. If someone TPs to kill that Warlock, I'm just like, okay. Yeah. You've killed the Warlock who has buyback, and now you can't push because you probably have to commit, you know, one or two heroes to take him down. Hellraisers will attempt round two. But this could be them losing the game, this choice and aggression. It could also be them winning the game if they kill no one. Yeah, you said you didn't like to see these teams playing not to lose, play to win. That's exactly what Hellraiser's doing. Oh right now. no! Oh my god, he just walked with the meatball! Waltz in along. Now Ramsey's gonna be able to come in, missing a lot, but he's gonna be able to take down J4. It looks like Swift ending. Pumps the Chronosphere, looking for it, throws it down now, but it's going to be a little bit late. The Troll's going to make his way in, 33, goes for the hookshot, gets blasted into the Chronosphere, and Ramsey's executes him. Long comes in with the epicenter, he's going to be able to take down the Puck, bring Solo low, 33, managed to take that kill, while Troll, a man fight, gets the bash going for Ramsey's is big if he can actually bring him down, but it looks like it's just not enough because Lil's sitting on the side with an Aghanim Scepter, managed to get the stun onto Kaiser, a two-man pro strike. They need to be able to kill one of these big-time cores, but they're just getting kited around. Swift Andy comes forward, goes straight for Swift Andy, but he doesn't have BKB, so he's just getting stunned up by Lil. He's controlling these heroes. A tornado brings both of the cores up and down to their deaths. Hellraiser's on the clock for two minutes on two of their cores. They tried to go all in for the victory, GG. but now they're going to be forced into the GG call. Oh, man, that is so painful. They went from so such a painful. dominant position, Cap. They, they had the lane pushed in. They had every one of VP's heroes stuck in the base and they go for this really greedy fight. No one buys back. BKB durations were wearing thin. And on the back of Swift Ending not having his own buyback and also chasing outside of base, getting really greedy for kills, Virtus Pro just like perfectly countered like that stage in the game. They just threw two Haymakers in a row and there was no way that the Hellraisers could, could contest with the late game Invoker and in conjunction with the Sven. And that was the big worry, right? Yeah. Once the Invoker gets to that late game stage and your BKBs are five seconds, it's nightmarish. Like you, you just can't, you can't ever really end the game. It certainly is a ten thousand gold lead for Hellraisers turns sour in just five minutes. They end up losing this game to Virtus Pro VP. Meanwhile, sigh of relief, they managed to two zero this series and solidify their top four in their groups more and more so that is going to be it for me and draskal on this stream i'm not even sure what's coming up next but it's something so stick around